Hello and welcome. Today we discuss Simin Behbahani's poem It's Time to Mow the Flowers. Um, now before I begin talking about this poem, let me give you a context about um, the setting and the poet um, because uh, the context is actually quite important for us to understand what's going on in the poem. So uh, let me first tell you about uh, Iran. This uh, poet is an Iranian poet, uh, poet and um, Iran had been quite a, a relatively modern nation um, before 1971 when the Islamic Revolution happened and post the Islamic Revolution, uh, Islam, uh, Iran, if you know, today is supposed to be one of the most uh, you know backward nations when it comes to human rights especially women's rights so um uh, you know earlier than 1979 women as i've shown in these two pictures uh, women were allowed to vote there were not many restrictions on them uh, with respect to how they should dress but after the islamic revolution there were many restrictions on iranian women in particular Though I am focusing on Iranian women, um, our author is not just a feminist uh, author. Uh, she is in general, she is against any kind of human atrocity. Um, so um, post uh, the Iranian revolution, women were denied equal rights and uh, they were required to wear a veil. Western culture was banned. Traditional Islamic law became more and more strict and um and it wasn't just you know women's rights music was banned all sorts of restrictions and censorships uh, were taking place um and uh, if you know even very recently women in iran are still have started protesting against the uh, you know pus punishment severe punishments uh, for not covering the hair so you know restrictions on uh, people of Iran has been a problem and this poem actually deals with such restrictions. Now let me talk about uh, Behbahani as a poet. Behbahani um, has been a very celebrated author and activist in Iran. She passed away in 2014 and she lived a long life of more than 80 years. Although in this case she's an outlier, many of her contemporaries, female contemporaries, had actually died very, very young. Um, and she was uh, born to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, uh, revolutionaries in general she was um, she was her father was a well-known writer well-known journalist and her mother was also a feminist writer and poet uh, although her parents had uh, divorced very very soon when she was born but um, this is the tradition that she's born to and where Bahani is also known for um, you know weaving personal and political together and um, she has spoken fearlessly about issues of women's rights. She's defended human dignity. She's talked ag against war. Um, she's written very, very sensitive poems about the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, she's also talked about the punishment that women in Iran get about, uh, you know, if they are accused of adultery, they are stoned to death. She stood up against all such practices. So clearly such a person... Um, uh, is very very bold and she stu stood up against the uh, Iranian authorities um, uh, for a very long time in her life as well um, and she's spoken against uh, it's not just that she's spoken against the Islamic revolution and the Islamic regime but she had even sp uh, she was a vocal um, you know, critic of the government even before the revolution um, so she has spoken uh, without fear of consequences and in many ways this poem is very much about a poet expressing their fearlessness or then their need to express um, the truth so as a poet she is known for innovating the ghazal style of poetry now ghazal style of poetry in, in irani um the irani uh, poetry it's it's pronounced something as a ghazal um, but in, in south asia it's pronounced as ghazal um, it basically uh, is couplets which are put together to form a poem so the poem is 
one but even if you pick out a couplet from within the poem it should stand should be able to stand on its own uh, so that's a ghazal so um and she what she did although ghazal is supposed to be a masculinist style of poetry where a man eroticizes a woman he um you know valorizes the beauty he uh, talks about the beauty of the woman in the ghazal but um, what behbahani does is that she uh, merges a uh, personal with the universal and she she tweaks the format of the ghazal to make it uh, more tenable to a woman uh, actually reciting or writing the ghazal so she is not using the ghazal or she is not using the ghazal form in the traditional way now let me talk about the poem uh, finally now it's time to mow the flowers uh, is a poem which was uh, published in 1983 in an al- in a volume called plains of arzhan and um, it basically talks about political and social restrictions on the people now this is the poem Uh, it says it's time to mow the flowers don't procrastinate fetch the sickles come don't spare a single tulip in the fields the meadows are in bloom who has ever seen such insolence the grass is growing again step nowhere else but on its head blossoms are opening in every branch exposing the happiness in their hearts such colorful exhibitions must be stopped bring your sickles to the meadow cut out the eyes of flowers so that none may see or desire let not a seeing eye remain i fear the narcissus is spreading corruption stop its display in a golden ball on a six-sided tray what is the use of your aches if it's not to chop them chop the elm tree in the maple's branches allow not a single bird a moment's rest my poems and the wild mint bear messages and perfumes don't let them create a riot with their wild singing my heart is greener than green flowers sprout from the mud and water of my being don't let me stand if you are the enemies of the spring now what does the sh- she do who does she address finally if you see towards the end of the poem she is addressing you are the enemies of the spring so basically she is addressing an oppressive regime who are against um the spring and here spring represents freedom it represents happiness and spring as a season represents new life right new life creativity and flowers are also representative of new life future right so let me do this poem point by point stands stands up by stands it says it's time to mow the flowers don't procrastinate fetch the sickles come don't spare a single tulip in the fields now we see that it's the poet is taking an ironic tone right she is criticizing this regime which is against freedom but in the beginning you feel that she is almost taking a side of taking the side of this oppressive regime she says it's time to do away with flowers right flowers here represent creativity happiness freedom life and uh, procrastination uh, for people who don't know procrastinate is to hold some work back so if you don't do something which is important you're cr- procrastinating right and insolence means boldness so um so this these lines are actually directed at a strong government uh, the authorities and uh, it she says that it's time that you should kill everything that is meaningful in the society and this could also be interpreted as women's rights in society so she says that you ca- should get rid of everything and anything that is a symbol of future greatness okay let me read the next few lines the grass is growing again stop nowhere else but on its head so it says she if she says if the grass is growing you should actually crush it right so these poem these these lines are about censorship about freedom about again she's using irony and she's saying that you should get rid of anything that is representative of life so little grass which is growing you know these are little shoots which are growing and which will later on become taller much taller so you should not let them grow if they grow they would become against you so you should get rid of them right away right so she says you should crush the grass 
you should crush the flowers as they're beginning to grow on every branch right blossoms are opening on every branch exposing the happiness in their hearts and she says such colorful exhibits must be stopped she says colors should be stopped happiness should be stopped right so this is a very ironic tone that she's taking if you remember the most the perfect example of irony would be uh, an example would be um, you know swift's letter uh, you know where he's becoming where he's talking about um, you know the irish famine and he's saying that you know you should just kill all the babies why because you need to um, because you need to and you you should you should feed on them because there's a lot of um there's a lot of uh, people are really poor in in ireland right so it's it's a very ironic tone that it's that swift is taking in that uh, the modest proposal um so that's an example of irony and this is also an example of irony i'm just drawing a comparison to tell you that sometimes poets and writers do this to draw home the point that you know um the regime is extremely oppressive you should crush the flowers as they are beginning to grow on every branch and these blossoms these exhibitions of beauty should be atrocious to the regime that does not want anyone to be happy so the government should actually crush all happiness from society here freedom and happiness are equated to each other and cut out the eyes of flowers so no one can ever desire or know what would lead to a happy life now oppressive regimes typically what they do is that they try to tweak the way people live they try to change the nature of language they try to change the nature of knowledge or freedom right so she says that anything um, that a, the first thing that a dictatorial regime would do would be to s- stop the growth of knowledge right and later on we also see that she um, goes on to talk about cutting of trees uh, which is also a symbol of um, of knowledge so here she says that cut out the eyes of flowers and eyes of flowers if 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 you're not able to see if you don't have the sense to see if you don't have the understanding of the world around you you would stop desiring right so um again you know knowledge is talked about in these lines i fear the narcissus is spreading corruption stop its display in the golden bowl on a six sided tray narcissus is actually a flower it's a spring flower it's also known as daffodils it's supposed to be a very beautiful flower and iran um, is iran also has a, a you know a, a, a daffodil festival so it's it would be a very popular flower it's a, it's the very symbol of spring um for many countries so it's the classic flower representative of spring so she says that so the moment narcissus comes the, the moment this 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 the flower this flower blossoms you know that the spring is coming and and the spring is actually the target of this regime you don't want anyone to become happy right so she says what is the use of your axe if not to chop down the elm tree the elm is actually representative of peace right so he she says that you don't have you if you don't cut trees if you don't um um cut do away with life what is the use of your weapons um should you should not even let birds sit on a tree you know you should just make them fly more and more and more and no matter what branch they sit on you should just do away with that tree okay so you should not let anybody be happy now we come to the last few lines where she says she talks about her job as a poet now she says my poem and the wild mint be a messages in perfumes don't let them create a riot with their wild singing she says she says that just like me and the wild mint which grows on its own uh, we bear messages we would communicate um, something to the world or we would carry a perfume to the people if you want to get rid of the spring you should get rid of a poet like me because i would never stop talking i would never stop spreading knowledge i would never stop spreading light my heart is greener than green greener than green here would mean that if the regime is getting rid of anything which is uh, which is blossoming anything which is growing even grass then she says that on my heart in my heart anything that has life is 
blossoming okay i am the very symbol of the creativity of life right flowers sprout from the mud and water of my being don't let me stand if you are the enemies of the spring so she says that if you are the enemies of the spring if you're the enemy of happiness if you're the enemy of life you will have to first get rid of the poet and finally this mean this means that the poet will not succumb the poet would keep writing and represent creativity art life and freedom so um in real life also um the poet uh, never restricted herself she was in fact barred from going away from a uh, from a country she was never able to travel outside a country after a certain point so um so although she's written a poem this poem much earlier um than <clears throat> when uh, you know when she was restricted from leaving the country but in a way she um she knows her responsibility and her nature as a poet that a poet is a truth teller right so this is the poem please let me know if you like the poem um this poem was actually uploaded on the request of um one of my subscribers um so uh, one of my uh, subscribers had uh, requested for this um her name was uh, is ayushi sharma so i'm thankful that she uh, requested and uh, please let me know if you have any other requests thank you